and Sigmund Freud lived together in the same street in Vienna. He said, luckily, they never met. <laughs> he said, can you imagine what would have happened had they met? Theodor Herzl would have said, I have this dream of a Jewish state. Sigmund Freud would have said, but tell me, Herr Herzl, how long have you been having this dream? <laughs> Theodor Herzl would have been psychoanalyzed, cured of his dreams, and today there would be no Midnight Israel. Friends, we are the people who were never cured of our dreams. Three great dreams. Dream one. To come to Shofar Gadol, Herr Rosena, the son, Nais, the Kabet, you attain the dream of Kibbutz Galuyot. That dream began with the first Aliyah in 1882, and that dream came true. The second dream, Ashiva Shavtenu Tuvari Shona Rebono Shalolo. Let us rule ourselves and not be ruled by others. And that dream came true on the fifth of year. 5708 on your mark's moment, but there always was a third dream. Bilu Shalayim Iracha Barachamim Tashuv. And that prayer, uttered by almost a hundred generations of our ancestors, came true 50 years ago today. And that we have seen the fulfillment of the greatest dream of them all. Friends, no other people in all of history has had a relationship with the city to compare with ours with Yerushalayim, America. There were other great cities. There was Babylon, there was Athens, there was Rome. But did anyone ever say of Babylon or Athens or Rome, what our ancestors said about Yerushalayim, you must have Yerushalayim, tiskach yamini, or in the words of that supreme poet, the rap singer, Matis Yahu. <laughs> Jerusalem, if I forget you, let my right hand forget what it's supposed to do. No people in all of history loved a city in the way the Jews loved and longed for Yerushalayim. It is said that in the early 1800s, Napoleon was passing a shul on Tisha B'Av, and he heard crying and tears and wailing and lamentation, and he asked one of his officials, what are the Jews crying about? His official said to him, they're crying because they've lost Jerusalem. Napoleon said, when did they lose Jerusalem? The official replied, 1,700 years ago. Napoleon replied, a people who can mourn Jerusalem for so long will one day have it restored to them, and so it was. Observations <laughs> have pointed out one of the great arrogance which sometimes we forget that during the Six Day War itself, as Israel faced the massed armies of Egypt in the south and Syria in the north, the Israeli government sent messengers secretly to King Hussein of Jordan begging him to stay out of the war. They said, we have no quarrel with you or with Jordan. We don't want to fight. And yet King Hussein refused to listen. He launched an attack, and only because of that was Israel forced to fight, and in one of the toughest battles of the war, in which Israel and Sahal lost so many, many, many young and heroic lives. Because of that, in the words that moved and lifted every Jewish heart in the entire world, Har Habayit, 
Via Delu. And the city came back to the people who never forgot it and never gave up hope for it. And we have lived to see Jerusalem reunited and rebuilt. And one of the great wounds of Jewish history has been healed. And we say humbly and with gratitude, Me'et Hashem Haita Zot Hineflat which has occasionally been not that popular. Namely that the affairs of state, especially when it comes to the Divine Israel, but in general, has a religious and a spiritual dimension. Well, those words were, that vision was echoed yesterday by the President of the United States, who said in Riyadh yesterday, that the task of peace in the Middle East must be a religious task. And I want to quote you the words he said. Religious leaders, he said in Saudi Arabia, must make this absolutely clear. If you choose the path of terror, your life will be empty, your life will be brief, and your soul will be condemned. Friends, that is a message some of us have waited a long time to hear. Does anyone who dares to criticize Israel remember this? Remember this one salient fact that since 1967 there has been full freedom of worship is throughout Yerushalayim era college for Muslims in the Al-Aqsa Mosque and the Dome of the Rock, for Christians in their churches and their holy places, and finally at last at the Kodal and elsewhere for Am Yisrael. Compare that religious freedom that has existed under Israel for the last 50 years with the tears that we still recall for Jerusalem for 19 years under Jordania rule between 1948 and 1967 when all but one of the 35 shuls in the old city were desecrated and turned into stables and hen houses and retreats and all the Sifrei Torah in the old city were desecrated and destroyed, including the Sefer Torah brought to Yerushalayim Erekodesh by my great-great-grandfather 150 years ago in 1867. Who cares for religious freedom in Yerushalayim? Israel cares. With Yerushalayim, tragically, under Christian rule. In the First Crusade in 1099, when the emissaries of the God of 